For more on the new leadership change, I spoke with Robert Kuhn, chairman of the Kuhn Foundation. He is also the author of How China's Leaders Think and the biography of China's former president, Jiang Zemin. I asked him about Xi's leadership style and how it compared to previous leaders. Well, first of all, Xi Jinping has had a remarkably uh, diverse uh, background, both family-wise and administratively. Let's start administratively. For more than two decades, he was literally at the grassroots, working his way up from a county supervisor, in effect, to the vice mayor of a city, to the governor of a province, Fujian, an important province on the coast, then party secretary, which, of course, is the top boss, like the CEO of a company of Zhejiang province, 55 million people, uh, the center of entrepreneurship in China, uh, a GDP now of close to $600 billion. And then he was the head of Shanghai as party secretary there before being elevated in 2007 to the standing committee and being, as vice president of the country, being prepared for sen uh, senior leadership. So that background is really an enormous preparation, really understanding the, the, the depths of the, the issues in China. When I was with uh, then party secretary of Zhejiang province, Xi Jinping, in 2006, uh, he told me some very interesting things. He said that empty talk does not help him run a province that has fit more than 50 million people, that have issues of ecology, that have uh, worker and uh, owner problems, uh, that have uh, administrative and issues of transparency. So even back then, he was talking about these same issues. That's very important, because some people will say that some of the things he's saying today are uh, uh, expedient for the moment. I know for a fact he was saying this at least seven years ago when he was at the local levels. Then if we look at the family background, that's really important as well, uh, because his father, uh, Xi Jong-sun, was one of the founders of China. One of the leading reformers under Deng Xiaoping was the one who really created uh, uh, the reform in, in Guangdong province and led reform. And on the other hand, his father uh, suffered greatly under extreme leftism uh, and had been imprisoned, both house arrest and during the Cultural Revolution. And Xi Jinping himself suffered during that time, being one of the first youths to be sent to the the, the farm and, in fact, the mountainous or rural area where he labored long for, f for five years or so, um, and in that struggle really understood the, the deep nature both of the problems of extreme leftism and what the people really need. Uh, and then after college, he served two years in the military and therefore comes to this top job with actual military experience, whereas previous leaders uh, learned in the job but did not have the same experience that he did. So it's a, that's a terrific background. Uh, I know a lot of Western uh, critics uh, had been saying in the past that because he was not appointed by Deng Xiaoping as previous leaders, as Jiang Zemin, of course, had, and even President Hu Jintao, that Xi Jinping, therefore, would be a weak leader because there were more leaders around from the past, and he wasn't appointed by one of the founders of China. Uh, for the last year, I was, I, I was saying this is not going to be true, that he's going to be a strong leader. China needs a strong leader at this time, and the people are demanding reform, and that he is, has the background to do so. But I have to tell you, I have been pleasantly surprised at how strong and how confident uh, Xi Jinping is. Uh, what we're seeing is the real man, and I look forward to a very positive uh, term of leadership for the next five and ten years. Well, Robert, what do other countries like the U.S. and China's largest partners need to know about Xi Jinping to cultivate a strong working relationship with him? I think, first of all, that he's someone who understands their issues. He's not someone who is uh, uh, unfamiliar with how the the, the the rest of the world works. This is the most important thing. And if we go back to his experiences running three major geographic areas, this is so significant. In fact, it's important for everyone to understand that, that Xi Jinping is not what the West may think is a dictator. That's not the Chinese system. That's a tremendous misnomer. Uh, the China system is a one-party system. But at the top of the party, we have the Politburo, 25 members, the Standing Committee of seven members. And the Standing Committee, really, everyone has a single vote. Everyone is, is equal at that level. The, the president of the country, the general secretary of the party, who is the number one ranked in the Standing Committee, is certainly first among equals and sets the tone. But it's important to realize that there is this collective leadership. And if you look at the seven leaders today, six, six, 
have run at least two major provinces as party secretary uh, uh, and as this, or as uh, governor or mayor if it's a major municipality. And so that experience of running what is in effect, if you look at China's provinces and its four major cities of Beijing, uh, Shanghai, Ch uh, Chongqing, and Tianjin, any one of those cities, th those are the equivalent of European countries. In terms of population, they might be in the top 25 in the world. In terms of GDP, the top 30 or 35 in the world. So for six of the seven leaders to have run as top person, uh, uh, at least two, and Xi Jinping ran three, as we said, uh, of these provinces gives them a remarkably rich uh, sense of how the world works. Again, I was there talking to Robert Kuhn, author of the book, How China's Leaders Think.